Hello, this is the next video in my regression playlist and we're looking at multiple linear regression and we're going to derive the least squares estimates for the multiple linear regression model. Now in the previous video, um, PV21, the 21th video in this playlist, we looked at this model here where this was the multiple linear regression model. So these are n by 1 vectors, this is an n by 1 vector, uh, this is beta 0, beta 1 through beta k, so it's a k plus 1 by 1 vector, and this is the data matrix, which is an n by k plus 1 vector. Now we do assume, we are assuming that x is full column rank, so it has a rank of k plus 1. Now let's find the betas that minimize this squared error. So in simple linear regression, we looked at this. So the error term, so if we subtract this over to the other side, and then we find the betas that minimize this squared error, which is this or, or this in scalar notation. But we're going to try to work in matrix notation as much as possible. But for some reason, I think that seeing it in scalar notation sometimes helps. So that's why I will often write it in both. So this uh, squared error is we're going to try to make it a function of the betas. So we have uh, uh, epsilon transpose epsilon, but let's plug in what epsilon is. It's y minus x beta, and of course this is the same. Now let's do this multiplication. So this transpose goes into this, and then it goes into this. And then we multiply the, the y's together, and we get this. That y and this x, we get this. Notice the transpose, right? Now this goes to this, and then it times y, so it's there, and then that times this, which is, is this. Now, these are scalars, so this is a 1 by n, and this is a k plus 1 by 1, so this thing is 1 by 1. So we can take the transpose of, it, or in this, and, and we get, uh, it doesn't change the value. So if we take the transpose of this, then it actually puts it in um, this form. Right, that Y should have a transpose. Like, what is going on? Um, yeah, so the transpose this, we get Y transpose, it moves to the other side, and then this becomes untransposed. And then we have two of them. And then this, you just distribute the transpose, you get this. Now, we, we're going to take the partial derivatives of this with respect to beta. And if there's anything that I can do for the statistical community, is when we take uh, partial derivatives or derivatives of matrices that we specifically uh, you know write down what type of notation we're using there's what's called numerator notation there's denominator notation some use a mixed notation and I'm in using numerator notation and and I say that because I often get comments that your results are off by a transpose and that's because they're used to seeing it in denominator notation, where I'm using numerator notation. Um, and I am driving everything that we're going to do in this video here, derivative of a quadratic form. So now let's take the partial derivatives of this, of Q, right, with respect to beta. Now there's no betas here, so it's constant and goes away. The derivative of this with respect to beta is, is just what's out front. The derivative of this with respect to beta is this, 2 beta prime x transpose x. Now we set it to 0 and we solve for beta. So we, we divide by 2 everywhere and then we take that to the other side and we're left with this. Now let's take the transpose of both sides and we get this. Now since x was full column rank, this is a k plus 1 by k plus 1 matrix that is non-singular. So we can take the inverse of it. So we take the, we pre-multiply by x transpose x inverse, 
and then that goes away, but we're left with this piece here. And that's it. That's the least squares estimate for our beta. And this is exactly what we derived when we were in the simple linear regression setting. So now let's look at some of the properties of our least squares estimates for beta, beta hat that is. So the expected value of beta hat, now since the x's are constant, so they just they come out front of the expectation and it's just the expected value of y. Now the expected value of y is x beta and then we have x transpose x inverse x transpose x so those are inverse matrices and we get i so it's just beta now uh, the variance of beta remember the beta hat that is so this matrix out here comes out front and then it goes out back transpose so you transpose this and you come up with this now the variance of y is sigma squared i so the sigma squared is a constant, so it come out front, and the i kind of goes away. So these two pieces, when put together, this I transpose, x transpose x inverse, x transpose x, that becomes the identity, and so we're just left with this piece, which is sigma, that's the variance covariance matrix of our least squares estimates for beta. Now notice that beta hat is written like this. So this matrix out front, if we just generically call it R, and we have r times y, our y vector. And this shows that beta hat is, a, is linear in the y's. And this is going to be important when we show that beta hat is normally distributed. Now, the properties of y, and I actually probably should have put this first. <laughs> Uh, the expect mean value of y is you plug in you know what y is, x beta plus epsilon so this is constant so the expectation goes into just here expected value of epsilon is zero so we just get beta x beta the variance of y plug in what y is x beta is constant so it doesn't play a part of the variance so it's just the variance of epsilon the variance of epsilon is sigma squared i now the fitted model is the the, the best line or the best model that fits the data. So the population model, of course, is this. The expected value of y is x beta. And that's when, that's when we know the betas. You know, so that, but we often don't know the betas. So we have to use the least squares estimates to come up with estimates of beta. Then y is equal to the fitted model, x beta hat, plus some error, and this is called the residual. Now the fitted model is often written as y hat, and then the, the residual is e. So these are both vectors, n by one vectors. So the expected value of the fitted model is expected value of x beta hat. Now x is constant, so it comes out front, and beta hat is random. So the expected value of beta hat, we learned on the first page, is beta. So it's x beta. So the fitted model is an unbiased estimate of our population model. The residual is the data minus the fitted model. So up here, if we look at the residual and subtract that to the other side, or better yet this, then we subtract to the other side and we get y minus the fitted model. That's the residual. But the fitted model is x beta hat. But the least squares estimate for beta is this, x transpose x inverse x transpose y, right? Now let's write factor out of y and we get this, right? If we multiply that in and this in, we get this line back. Now, we generically call this matrix multiplication here H, and we give it a name called the hat matrix, and we're going to uh, uh, learn about that quite a bit in the next video. So this is how you represent the residuals in matrix notation, I, which is the identity matrix, minus the hat matrix times the Y vector.
Now, a couple notes here. HX, remember H is the hat matrix, which is, which is this. So we plug in H, and then there's our X. But look here, we have X transpose X inverse, X transpose X. The, this is identity. And the identity times X, you just get X. So H times X is just X. Now notice if we have H, H. So let's put H here and H here. And notice that this is the identity matrix again. So the X comes over and we're left with just this, which is H. So H is item potent. So let's look at the expected value of the residual. So the residual in matrix form is this, right? And this is constant, so it comes out and we expect the value of Y. Well, the expected value of Y is X beta. And then if we multiply this into both sides, you know, identity times X beta, we just get X beta, H times X beta. But here we said, hx is just x, so this is x, and we get x beta minus x beta, which is zero. So the expected value of the residuals is zero. Now the variance, um, we, you know, we plug this in, and this is a matrix times y vector, so this comes out left, and this is the, var the variance of y, and then we transpose it out back. Now the um, variance of y is sigma squared i and if you take that transpose in both of those are symmetric so you just get i h back now this is constant so it can come out front and the identity matrix times this it kind of just goes away so we're left with this right here now when we multiply this piece out we get i times i which is i i times minus h minus h times the identity h times h. Now h times h is h, so this is h. So we've got h minus h, those go away, and we're left with i minus h. So the variance of our residual is sigma squared i h. And that's what it is in matrix notation. Well, that's all I have for this video. We'll just keep rolling on this multi, multi, uh, multiple linear regression model and and keep going. I think the next one, we're actually going to study the hat matrix in much, much more detail. So hopefully you enjoyed it. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.